Hi there, I'm Tina Jessen and this is your free training video to help you go through my 12 steps of creating your personalized visibility plan. Yes, there are 12 steps and I will be going through all 12 of those with you in the next half hour or so. So I want to start out with the very basics and we're going to review, go back to basics to make sure that you're really doing the right stuff from the beginning and then we can start building on those foundations going forward. So number one is something I call finding the unique me. The unique me. Now if you build your business on the unique me, no one else can copy you and that's a very important part of establishing a business that isn't going to be what I call a me too business or an also ran business. I mean I would hate to be you know one of many, I want to be in a category of one and I suggest that that's a pretty good place for you to start too. So we do that by having a look at what I call the unique me. Now this is going to hinge very strongly on the reason why you have started the particular business that you've started and it will have a corresponding effect on how successful that business is actually going to be. So what is your reason why? Why have you set up that particular business? And is it being very authentic and true to yourself? Because if it's not, if you're trying to be something else or somebody else or imitate somebody else, it's probably not going to be as successful as if you were unique uh, and uh, unique to you and congruent with your beliefs and, uh, and what you're prepared to do. And then you can start to leverage all that is you and build your story. And like I say, nobody can copy your story because it will be unique. And basing a business on that philosophy is certainly good for positioning and positioning is a vital part of creating the visibility that you require. Point two is um, what I call the five, the five keys, the five keys to success. And um, we look at, um, well, we start looking at the very basics. We look at number one, which is natural ability. What is your natural ability? Some people are fantastic on the phones. Some people prefer face to face. Uh, other people like writing. Others like speaking and presenting. Others won't, you know, would never do that. So you need to kind of find your niche on what your abilities are, your natural abilities, things that come easy to you. I don't want you to think about the stuff that you find difficult to do because I'm a great believer that business should be easy. Easy. So let's make it easy on yourself. Let's not get yourself into something that you find particularly difficult to do. Try and find the easy routes through that. And finding your natural ability is, is, is certainly uh, point number one. The second point is looking at uh, your capability. What are you capable of actually doing? So not so much um, what you uh, enjoy, and it doesn't have to be what you actually have done for the last 20 years either, but it's what uh, you are capable of doing. You know, maybe you are great at writing, and that should be, you should find some way of, uh, within your business of, of having an outlet for that. Um, Point three is um, your, what I could, it's a bit of a made up word, but it's collateral, your collateral ability, your collateral ability. So like natural ability is what you're naturally good at and, and the things that come really easy to you, your collateral ability is your ability to turn the collateral that you have had exposure to in your business and professional life so far and modify that and recreate it into today's business that you're running. Uh, at the moment. So have a think about what your collateral might be. It could be that you're great at writing a certain type of report or you're good at um, selling in a particular way or um, developing training in a certain way or having a body of knowledge uh, that you can leverage or modify in some way that is really suitable for your business today. I call it collateral ability. It's the ability to adapt the collateral you've been exposed to in your professional and business working life. Um, the fourth thing is um, what I call, well, it's basically your credibility. What, what markets are you credible in and what is it you've done that, again, you could leverage into your, uh, into your new business, your new venture uh, to really underpin everything that uh, you're planning to do going forward. So knowing where your credibility lies is very important and the only way you can really find that out is to ask the people around you that know you and I'll give, I'll give you some tips on how to kind of get that out of people uh, a little bit later on. And then the fifth idea is uh, your visibility in general. Now all these things start to build on this whole uh, what I call a virtuous circle of visibility 
And believe me, once you start understanding and I open up all these 12 points, you will see that this is just a, an ongoing cycle, uh, it's a virtuous circle that you really just cannot get off and it is so exciting. So visibility is success factor number five. My third idea for you, um, as far as putting your plan together, your visibility plan together, is you need to plan. You need to plan to take the world by storm. Um, I always think about planning. I, okay, I, I've been a project manager for a number of years. In oh, two previous lives ago, I was a project manager for an IT company and, and did quite a lot of project management for, for a number of years. Um, but what I found was when I was 20, 28, I develop my first life plan and you know we talk about business planning but let's go back a stage let's go back to the life plan if you've never really sat down and thought about what you want to achieve in the next seven years I tend to do my life planning in seven year stints and it seems to work for me uh, it may be a different length of time for you maybe ten years but seven seems to work for me seven year cycle um, I write uh, a plan of things I want to achieve things I want to do and things I want to be things I want to achieve, do and be. That is the premise of your life plan and part of that life plan might be to run a successful business. Uh, but it needs to be in your life plan because if it's not in your life plan it doesn't kind of fit in and get that whole life balance thing right. Um, and the most brilliant thing about running your own business is that you have the ability to get the life balance right. And believe me, it took me several years into my first business before I really realized that but I hope that now I've actually got that life uh, balance back in there but if you business is not part of your life plan then things can start getting a little bit tricky uh, one of the things I do do uh, is I use uh, an ideas board I suppose it's taken from kind of the design training I've had but where you cut out pictures uh, out of magazines things that you like places you'd like to go, things you'd like to purchase, um, people you'd like to be with, and you kind of put this montage together, uh, a collage of, of ideas of um, what your life plan, what you'd like your life to look like over, over the next seven year period. Uh, I started doing it as a, as a book, as a scrapbook, and now I do it as, I actually call it a journey board now because I've started on that journey, so it's no longer a plan, it's a journey through my life, and I have one that I've created quite recently, which is aiming for my next seven years. So start off with a life plan, uh, that, that can be really helpful. The second part is then your business plan, and I'm sure you've all done a business plan. Uh, what I always think of a business plan is uh, a divine inspiration idea catcher. That's what a business plan is to me. Um, we all have those moments of eureka where we wake up in the middle of the night, you know, maybe 4 a.m. and we go, oh, wow, I've just had the most amazing idea. And you really do need to capture that. You need to write it down. And having the, the notepad by the side of the bed can work for some people. I find I have to leave the room because uh, I, I share, share a bed with my husband. So I don't want to be switching the light on to do this. So I usually leave the room, go downstairs and write some ideas down. And then I can come back to it later when I'm more awake and more conscious and I can really apply some good thinking to it. But if you put it into your business plan, then all the ideas that you have as a new business, because when you really start your new business, you're kind of full of ideas and all that enthusiasm and everything's possible because you've not actually started down any road yet, so everything is possible, then you really need to capture that in your business plan. And it also captures all the questions that you have, all the doubts that you have, all the things you still need to find out yet if it's viable. Uh, catch all that in your business plan. And don't just write a business plan at the beginning and then stick it in a drawer and forget about it. It. That's what a mistake a lot of businesses make. When you put your business plan together, think of it as your divine inspiration ideas catcher and update it all the time. Now, sometimes you'll be looking at this thing and it will give you guidance and it will say, right then, okay, this is the next thing I'm going to do. Another time you'll think, oh, there's just too much here to even ever get my head around. Well, that's okay. And this is where the divine inspiration comes from. Because you have these ideas and lots of people around the world will have ideas, probably at a similar time. And it's the people that act on them that actually make those opportunities happen. But it might be that you've written it down and you've taken some action, but you don't quite know yet how you're going to implement that. But the fact that you've written it down means that when an opportunity comes knocking on the door, you will be ready for it. Now, if you have the idea and don't really do anything with it, you'll have forgotten about the idea. And then when the opportunity comes knocking on your door, you won't see it as an opportunity. 
So I really do recommend that, yes, put a business case together, but think of it as your, uh, your, your inspirational uh, ideas catcher, your, your divine inspiration ideas catcher, and document anything and everything that comes into your mind. Um, and then it may unravel later and evolve into something that you can actually use within your business. So those are uh, a few tips there on, on planning. Um, if you have started a business already and you've been running it for a while, and obviously this economy is affecting everybody, now is a really good time to uh, implement my three R's, which is basically uh, the idea of uh, reviewing, refining, and uh, repositioning. So review, refine, reposition. And it might be that by going through these 12 steps, you can focus a lot more and you can hone in and you can find your niche and you can really start to exploit things in a different way that you've never really thought about before. So doing a review, refine and repositioning activity around the plan is, 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 is really, really is critical. So use the planning stage no matter where you are in your business, even if it's about reviewing where you're up to. Uh, my fourth idea, my fourth idea is uh, around the whole idea of, of clarifying, defining uh, and getting your USP because you have to know yourself before you can sell yourself. You need to know who you are and what it is you do before you can then go out and sell that. And if you are a, an owner, manager or a solopreneurial business, you will have to go out and, uh, and sell yourself first. So again, it works around this idea of knowing what you will do and also knowing what you won't. Please, please, please don't try when you start off in business and a lot of businesses fall into this trap of being all things to all people because you become nothing to no one. So think about what you will and what you won't do and what you won't do is just as important. Now when I was redefining myself in my new business and I'm doing like marketing or strategy or whatever, I thought, well, I can't really use the word marketing because there's a whole host of marketing stuff I will not do. I will not be able to help you design your logo or your business card or your website. I can tell you what needs to go in there. I can help you think strategically. I can help you put the copy together. I can help you come with some powerful messages. But I am not a graphic designer. And I made that decision very early on that I was not going to learn how to do that because there's a lot of great people out there that can do that. If you need those skills, I've got um, associations with people that I can put you in touch with. I can connect you to those people. But that is not something that I do. So knowing what you won't do as much as what you will do is very important at positioning yourself and having that immense clarity and definition in defining your unique selling point or your unique selling proposition, which again stands you apart from the competition. Um, you need to keep that to being your authentic self as well. Again, don't pretend to try and be somebody else and mimic someone because you need to find your own strengths and skills uh, and that's where that uh, natural ability and uh, uh, capability all kind of comes together. Um, also, to try and define you as um, an individual, uh, the idea of defining your category of one and, and you have the power to define that because you don't have a boss to answer to you can define your own category and you can be a category of one and one great tip on how to help you to do that is to do it in, in, in a particular way and ask this question or answer this particular question I am the only I am the only and then you define what you are the only one of it could be consultant trainer speaker um, producer of widgets I am the only I am the only who I am the only whatever who and that's the thing that you that's the thing you do what is it you actually do for example I create visibility so I'm the only uh, British speaker and trainer who provides visibility for solopreneurial businesses and two, who do you do it to? Solopreneurial businesses are who I t I've chosen to work with. That's my small niche. I don't want to do it for everybody. Some of the stuff that I do with solopreneurial businesses just wouldn't work for major businesses. There's some stuff that would, but the whole program wouldn't work for a larger business. Certainly wouldn't work for a corporation. So you need to look at, um, I'm the only who to, that's who you're going to do it for, so that they provide some benefit. 
So let me just run that one by you one more time and I'll give you my example uh, as something to base it on. I'm the only British speaker and trainer who works with solopreneurs to help them gain maximum visibility so they can make a lot of money. That's what I do. And that's what you need to do as finding your category of one, define your category of one. So make some notes and come up with the I'm the only who to so. Ah, right, then. that's four of our points uh, covered already. Number five, how to think big from day one and how that can blast your competition out of the water. Now, this isn't about trying to run before you can walk. It's about how big can this business idea of yours go? How big can it go? Let's just do kind of like, whoa, it could be this big. And yeah, let's, let's think about that. And why not? Why not do that? Because it's what you think. It's about thinking big. It's not about doing big yet. It's about thinking big. The bigger you think, the wider you open up the whole idea of doing as much as you can. But also you've got to think about doing as much as you can with what you have now. So I'm not talking about, you know, if I had a million pounds I could do all this advertising and we would be the biggest, greatest, whatever. I'm not talking about that. It needs to be something that uh, is, a, is thinking big but without costing you a fortune. And obviously when we're first starting a business, making sure that we're not overspending is probably one of the key things. You know, most businesses don't last the first year because they run out of budget. Uh, and they run out of planning and they run out of ideas uh, to keep themselves going. So let me take you through my 10 steps of how to think big from day one. Um, the first thing is making sure you know where to start. Uh, being in the right place financially, reducing your, your overheads, not getting into debt, certainly not taking a mortgage out on your house, Try and do it in as risk-free or risk-averse way as possible. Uh, so start on solid foundations. And if you have got six months savings in the bank, that's a great place to be. If you haven't started your business yet, then you need to be thinking about saving, say, 50% of your salary if you can do that at all, because you will be on a reduced income for a fair while when you first start your business. So if you can give yourself a good run-in before you need to do that, even better. Another great tip is to make sure you get all the training that you need before you leave your corporate employment, because you will need to learn some new skills, maybe sales skills, maybe marketing skills, maybe accounting skills, because you will be your your, you are your company. There is no marketing department. There is no accounts department. You have to wear many hats. So make sure that you start in a really good place uh, before you um, before you leave corporate world if you are in a job already. Um, number two is getting the right idea and that links back into the whole idea of your five keys to success. Your natural ability, your credibility, your collateral ability, your credibility and your visibility. So the whole idea of getting the right idea first, because if you get the right idea, you're not going to waste as much time getting the wrong idea and then realising it later and having to backtrack. And it also costs a lot of money going down that road. The third thing is uh, learning how to sell. And selling for a small business when you are your business is very different than selling for a big corporation. You don't have all those backup services that I mentioned earlier. You really do need to learn the basics all the way through. And if you can take trainings on that, I would certainly recommend it. Um, even if you've been selling um, for, for a long time, there's going to be so many different things that you now need to think about. And if you have never sold anything in your life, then my goodness, you're going to have to learn. Because if you can't sell yourself, then you won't be able to sell your service or products. So, like I say, get as much training as you can and learn how to sell. The next thing is uh, point number four, how uh, learning how to write. Now, I'd written a lot for my uh, a lot of articles for my website, but one of the things I I mean I, I found I remember a couple of years ago I found some of my very first writings, and they were so long-winded and laborious, and they had to use a load of jargon, and oh, it was so hard to difficult to read. When you set up a new business, you need to go back to basics and really start to learn to write again. And the, 
best thing to think about, especially if you are offering services to a wider public and not too technical, is to keep the language very simple and write it as though you, you're writing, uh, you're telling your best friend, write as though you are speaking. That is probably my best tip for learning to write. Um, so you really need to have a think about um, how you're going to get your message across, modify your writing style, not be too pompous so that anybody can understand where you're coming from without being technically aware. Even if you are running a technical based business but your um, clientele is not business to business but maybe business to consumer, you still need to take out a lot of the jargon and keep it really simple uh, and use nice easy language. And again if you can uh, write as though you speak, as though you were chatting to somebody or your best friend who kind of is interested but doesn't really know much about what you do, then that's probably the best uh, approach to actually take when you're learning to write again. Point number five, uh, become an expert in your field. Now, who are not an expert? But you should be, because if you're setting up a business doing whatever it is, you need to have some kind of expertise. And if you have expertise in a field, then you are an expert in your field. But the trick there is to make sure that that expertise gets out there and gets known uh, so people can differentiate you and see you as not just a expert, but even the expert. I mean, how great would that be? Um, Next point would be, what's your visibility strategy? What's your visibility plan look like? Uh, and by the end of this uh, training, you will have a bit of an idea of what should be going into that plan. And I can obviously work with you to pad out some of the gaps there and help you really create a very strong visibility plan. And that will include your online strategy as well as your media strategy and your offline personality and branding and all those things we'll, we'll touch on later. Um, how do you get people to talk about you? That's my next point. How, how are you going to get people to talk about you? Not your competition, but you. So you're going to have to do some really interesting stuff out there. And it's not about throwing money at it. It's about just coming up with different ways that you can actually um, get out your message to the people that you need to become your clients. So how do you get people to talk about you? Uh, my point number eight is uh, what are people saying about you? What are people saying about me? Do you know how to find that out? Yeah, that'd be good if you could, wouldn't it? Well, can I suggest one resource that I've used that has been very effective? I use LinkedIn. Now, I don't use LinkedIn uh, social networking, you know, do all the stuff that you should do on LinkedIn. I I joined LinkedIn for one purpose and one purpose alone and that was to connect to people that I'd done business with in the past. Now different companies that uh, I'd either worked with or people I'd worked with or people I'd worked for in the past and I made all those connections and I probably made mm, 20 or 30 different connections and what I did when I was connected to them I asked them very politely if they would write me a recommendation. So what was it like working with Tina Jessen or what was it like Tina Jessen working within your organisation? So I asked for recommendations and now I know what people are saying about me and I can leverage that in my website, in my marketing materials and uh, of course I've given recommendations back to those individuals too because that's how LinkedIn works. So if you don't use LinkedIn for any other reason but for purely to get your recommendations to find out how people view you and, and what you are really like to work with then ask for some recommendations of LinkedIn. Great top tip there. Uh, number nine, what will make you uh, an industry leader or at least seen in your industry? Because again, you want to be just this, this also on this me too company. And this is where the thinking big concept really comes into play. Because if you can think big enough and you can come up with enough angle, you can really start to set standards within your industry. Maybe you run trainings, maybe you set the standard, maybe you uh, win awards. There's things that you can do that can really elevate you as uh, an industry leader. And uh, that's what visibility is all about. So I'll give you some ideas on how we can do that. And it's all about leveraging that unique cue we talked about earlier. So go back to the sort of basics and have a look at what you can leverage. And I talk a lot about leverage, but you've got to have the material there to leverage. So think about different angles, different ways that you can leverage the unique you. I know you can. Uh, so um, finally, uh, that is my 10 tips on how uh, to basically think big from day one. 
So moving, moving on, moving through uh, my material, um, I've also uh, got a few tips on how to get the press, how to get the media to come to you. Now, I've had the luxury of uh, attracting press inquiries probably for the last five, six, seven years now, where people are actually coming to me and I'm not having to do a huge amount of proactive uh, marketing for me and my UK business. So how can you start to generate uh, maximum exposure for your business? Well, I've got a number of tips uh, I'd like to go through. Uh, I think there's about 10 or so on those. So let's start off. First one is knowing your message. You've got to know your message. What is it you're trying to get across? And it's not a sales message. It can't be too salesy, but obviously you have an underlying thing that you want to get out into the world. Um, so let's go through some of my tips here. There must be 101 reasons uh, to send a press release out, but think of the most creative, newsworthy item or article. Um, when something amazing happens to one of your clients, Think, how can I use this? How can I leverage yeah, this word again? Leverage it again and again. Think of an idea uh, that you can pitch in a story. Are you creating news about your business? I'm sorry, but if you've just employed a new sales manager, that is not news. That's dull. That's really dull. And it's probably not going to get picked up by more than perhaps an industry newsletter, perhaps. But really there's more things that you can do to create news so have a think about what is it you can do to create news about you it doesn't have to cost a lot but it can really go a long way in raising your visibility uh, tip number three collect your uh, collect case studies uh, from your clients that you can talk about and you can shout about uh, collect customer quotes always ask for permission obviously see if you can use this information in your marketing materials but once you've got that permission you can leverage it in so many ways great client comments, put it on your website, put it in your uh, print media, work it into your articles. And if you've got uh, a photography of something that you've done, if you create something, then take photography. Um, that can really go a long way. Write a scenario, write a scenario and use those quotes in a little story that the journalist can use. Having the pictures is even better. Uh, point number four, create well-written articles. And again, not directly selling your product or service, uh, but then when you've got your article, you can put that onto blog sites, onto your websites, and onto uh, online article submission uh, websites too. Uh, and, you know, give away some secrets. You know, have your top 10 tips of how to do whatever it is and provide some Q&A. These are the kinds of things that can really add value and you're spinning the stuff that you already know, do and use, but you're leveraging it more and more effectively every time. Second area of getting the media to come to you is knowing what your audience is. Who are they? You've got to ask the question, who buys from me now and who do I want to buy from me in the future? And then you need to think about, well, what publications do these kinds of people read and how do I get there? So you really need to know your audience before you can find the right publications. And obviously, my uh, third point is what's in it for me. You have got to have some kind of idea of what kind of response you want. Typically, that call to action. Um, you know, add notes, um, add editor's notes at the bottom of your article um, so that they have a little bit more information about who to come to for, for, for photos or interviews or something like that. Uh, reference uh, your business contact number and your website in the body of the article if you can. I mean, one tip I use quite a bit is Tina Jessen, founder of, and then I put my website address in there. That can work if it's integrated within the article copy, worth a shot. Um, state that interviews and photographs are available on request. Might be the only way you ever get to find out that they're running an article, because often articles are reprinted without them calling you to tell you that that's going to happen. So that is a really good way of actually getting some feedback from people, and they love to have photographs. If they've got space to fill, they will use them. Uh, and my uh, fifth top tip really is uh, make sure that you do include that call to action. It might be to find out more, go to this website or to book, call this number or go to here or call today. Make it a real strong call to action. Uh, don't overdo it but make sure it's in there. Sometimes it gets cut and it's always a shame that you have a piece of press going out and they haven't made any reference to your contact details in that call to action. 
So you need to know your, t t t t your target publications. Easy for me to say. You know, need to know your publications, be them uh, national, uh, regional, local, trade, business to business, general interest, etc. There's lots and lots and lots of magazines and newspapers out there and available. And, and the really interesting thing is a lot of people don't go to national level. Now, maybe you're not uh, offering a service that is a nationally available service. It's only unique to a particular county or state. But if you can get national coverage, that can really add a lot to your credibility and it's worth going for and you know what it's actually easier in some cases to actually get into local um, international media rather than local media because locally they get swamped but nationally people just don't think they're going to get there so if you can be a national resource then even better and they will start coming back to you and it can actually be easier to get in nationally than it can in locally I know that from personal experience bizarre I know my fifth tip on helping the media come to you is know your industry. You really need to know what uh, is going to work for you and figure out um, how um, what's happening in your industry can be used to your advantage. Now it might be, obviously the market's slow but you found an angle. It might be that you can save money, it might be that you can save energy, it might be that you can go greener, it might be that you can help people make more money. It, it, there's lots and lots of angles, so no matter what's happening in the economy, what's ever, ever happening in the news, make sure you know what's happening in your industry so again you can leverage an angle know what's being said and who's saying it at all different levels and include the government view on that as well because what you can do then and again get ready for another five top tips on how you can leverage that watch your industry and know what's happening uh, where it's going to what's going on and who's saying what because then you can have a view on what they say and it gives you uh, a realm of inspiration for what can really happen out there Make the link between the current news stories and what you offer and what your opinion is. Listen and read the news related uh, items uh, regarding your industry or related industries. Um, listen uh, to up and coming items and features on TV and radio, phone ins even. You might be able to contribute your expertise uh, and your professional capability in that area as well. And my fifth tip for, for this whole idea of finding out what the media wants and knowing your industry is going to my website. Go to www.whatthemediawants.com and post a comment. I work tirelessly working with journalists, finding what they are talking about, coming up with views and opinions, and I invite you, I actually invite you on that blog site to come along and put your views and comments on there too. Now that makes it a very valuable resource for journalists and guess what you potentially get a plug for your company and your business just by putting a comment on there and it's completely free so have a go at that well those are my first t uh, first five uh, tips on how to start building your visibility plan I have got a heap more uh, but I'm going to do that in part two um, I hope you're finding this helpful uh, giving you some insight and some ideas that you can actually use in your business because that's what it's about. It's no good just knowing this stuff, it's how can you implement it. Uh, anyway, I'll see you in part two a little bit later on. Bye for now.